Coming up, how a federal judge's ruling will affect President Trump in a defamation case. And what a federal court decision means for absentee voters. All of that and more today, Wednesday, October 28th. Good morning, Emerson. I'm Mike Cerullo. And I'm Adelaide Willard. We begin with this morning's top stories. A federal judge Tuesday ruled the Department of Justice cannot represent the president in a defamation suit filed by a woman who claims he raped her. Former columnist E. Jean Carroll says President Trump raped her in a New York City store more than 20 years ago. She sued the president after he told White House reporters she made up the story. The Justice Department says President Trump was acting in official capacity when he made these claims and tried to dismiss the case. But the judge ruled the law protecting federal employees from defamation suits does not include the president. Federal courts are putting their feet down on absentee ballots. A Wisconsin federal court judge moved to allow late ballots to be counted if they arrived within six days of the election. He also moved that ballots would have to be postmarked by November 3rd. The final vote ruled 5-3 to three against the motion. Voting restrictions are being imposed on early and absentee voters all across the country. The race is close and the election is in less than a week. Protesters in Philadelphia took to the streets for a second time last night. At least 30 protesters were arrested and 30 police officers were hospitalized late Monday night and early Tuesday morning. The protesters gathered after police shot and killed a black man on Monday afternoon. 27-year-old Walter Wallace Jr. was allegedly waving a knife and walking towards officers before he was shot. The officers demanded Wallace drop the knife several times before firing multiple shots into his chest and shoulder. Wallace's father told the local newspaper his son suffered from mental health issues. He believes the police used excessive force. Overnight, Tropical Storm Zeta escalated to a hurricane. Last night, Zeta strengthened to a Category 1 hurricane and is expected to move on to a Category 2 around this afternoon. The hurricane is sustaining wind speeds of 85 miles per hour and is expected to make landfall later today in Louisiana. Experts say the storm surge from Zeta could be life-threatening. Residents along the Gulf Coast should be prepared to evacuate at short notice. And now for a weekly update on the COVID-19 pandemic. The United States averaged more than 71,000 new COVID-19 cases per day last week. That's the first time the seven-day average has been more than 70,000 cases since the start of the pandemic. 37 states across the country are currently seeing increased positivity rates, with more than 20 of those at or near record high case numbers. The month of October is set to become the second highest for new countrywide COVID-19 cases, with around 1.4 million total cases this month. Health experts are warning this recent surge in cases will most likely be the beginning of an upward trend that continues on for the next few months. After months under lockdown procedures and almost a year of dealing with the coronavirus, pandemic fatigue is setting in. Cases are surging all over the world, but global trends show people being less cautious. Experts from John Hopkins University say motivation to follow regulation is dropping. As winter approaches, everyone is encouraged to continue social distancing and wearing masks and to increase personal sanitation. Now we head to our politics correspondent, Briley Carey. What do you have for us, Briley? Amy Comey Barrett has now been confirmed as the newest associate Supreme Court justice just eight days before that presidential election. The 52-48 vote to confirm Barrett took place on Monday night, followed quickly by Barrett being sworn in by Chief Justice Roberts on Tuesday morning. Barrett is the first Supreme Court judge to be sworn in without bipartisan support. Immediately after she was sworn in, lawyers from Pennsylvania submitted a request asking Barrett to recuse herself from an upcoming Supreme Court case surrounding mail-in ballots. They say that having Barrett serve on a case that could influence the results of the election so soon after her appointment by President Trump would be inappropriate. And President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden making a final push on the campaign trail, trying to win support from undecided voters. 
The presidential candidates and their prospective vice presidents have been heavily focused on the swing states, with both President Trump and Biden visiting Pennsylvania on Monday before heading to other states. Biden spending time in Florida and Georgia, while the president reportedly plans to focus on Michigan, Minnesota, and Ohio. Vice President Mike Pence also out on the campaign trail, despite at least five of his aides testing positive for the coronavirus. The Center for Disease Control recommends quarantining for 14 days after coming in contact with a positive person, which Pence has chosen not to do. And looking forward to next Tuesday, when only six days from now, the presidential election will take place. So what do you as a voter need to know? First, if you plan to vote by mail and have not yet sent in your ballots, the United States Postal Service recommends doing that by today at the latest. If you are unable to mail that ballot in on time, you can submit it at your polling location in person. Also, remember to bring your ID when you go to vote. It is required at polling stations to prevent fraud. And finally, remember that as long as you are in line to vote when your polling location closes, they are required by law to allow you to cast your ballot. Mike and Adelaide, have you guys already made plans for how you're going to make sure your vote is counted this election? I absolutely have, Briley. Thank you so much for asking. I was able to mail in my ballot just a few days ago, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a notification that my vote has been counted. What about you, Mike? Uh, I'm going to be voting for the first time in person at my local polling station. Um, and if you don't already have a plan at home, make sure you make a plan and go out and vote if you're eligible. And I mailed in my ballot last week and got confirmation yesterday that it has been counted by the state of Pennsylvania. So I'm all set. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Briley. A new Massachusetts law will allow thousands of residents to collect an additional $1,800 in unemployment benefits. Charlie Baker signed the bill Monday, which allows more than 17,000 people who were ineligible for relief under the Lost Wages Assistance Program that ran from July through September to receive state assistance. The state unemployment rate dipped just below 10% in September, but has remained steady since then. A new stimulus package from the federal government in the near future seems unlikely as lawmakers struggle to reach a deal. Police are guarding ballot boxes in Framingham after one in Boston was burned, destroying the ballots of around 30 voters. The fire was started at 4 a.m. Sunday morning and police arrived at the scene at only 4.11 a.m. Worldy Armand was arraigned on Monday for burning a ballot box outside the Boston Public Library. Armand has been charged with willful and malicious burning. The U.S. Attorney's Office and FBI say it is, quote, a top priority of our offices to help maintain the integrity of the election process. COVID-19 cases are on the climb in Massachusetts with more than 1,000 new cases every day for the past couple of days. But the federal government is sending the state 2 million rapid COVID-19 tests. The tests were manufactured by health technology company Abbott and are able to deliver results in about 15 minutes. But health experts say these antigen tests won't be as reliable as the more common PCR tests. Governor Charlie Baker is expected to distribute the test to schools, nursing homes and first responders as soon as possible. Two suspects have been arrested following the murder of Christopher Lacasse. The 20-year-old was found shot in a Super 8 motel after multiple 911 calls reporting shots fired. Laskis was taken to the Good Samaritan Hospital where he was pronounced dead. On Monday, Devontae Bly Mollenthiel was charged with murder and the second suspect, Valdia Rodriguez, was arrested yesterday. He is expected to appear in court on Monday. When we come back, Joey Dubois will give you an update on all your favorite sports teams. Don't go anywhere. All right, come back in 10 seconds. Ready, camera one. Camera one, get a wide shot of the entire thing, and in three, two, one, take. Tell Q. Welcome back to Emerson College. Emerson Trails. Camera four, get a shot of the players coming across the court. 10 seconds left. Emerson Trails by one point. As camera two, close on the first two Thanks, Joe. 10 seconds left. Emerson is hoping to pull away and score this game. Camera one, get a close up, follow them over. Camera one close up on number 33. Thanks, Joe. 10 seconds left. Emerson. Follow the ball. Follow the ball.
Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. Now we go over to our sports correspondent, Joey Dubois. What do you have for us, Joey? Thanks, Adelaide. The Los Angeles Dodgers are your World Series champions. They defeated the Tampa Bay Rays 3-1 last night to win the series in six games. Shortstop Corey Seager was named the World Series MVP following the game with eight hits and two home runs in the series. Rays manager Kevin Cash made the controversial decision to pull starter Blake Snell in the sixth inning up 1-0. Nick Anderson proceeded to come in for Tampa and gave up the tying and go-ahead runs. The Dodgers came up short in the postseason the past couple of years despite eight straight postseason berths, but finally managed to get over the hump this year. After re-signing star outfielder Mookie Betts earlier this year, the Dodgers will return largely the same team next season. The World Series victory is the first for LA since 1988. Star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is out for the season after suffering a torn ACL on Sunday. The Browns wideout is one of the most talented players in the league and Cleveland will now be without his services for the rest of the year. The Browns are off to their best start in years, sitting at 5-2 after a comeback win over the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. Beckham played a large role in the team's success early on with 23 catches and four total touchdowns. Quarterback Baker Mayfield will look to his other targets more now as he looks to keep Cleveland's early momentum going. The Patriots lost three games in a row for the first time since 2002, and now quarterback Cam Newton's job may be in jeopardy. The QB was benched for Jarrett Stidham late in Sunday's 33-6 loss to the San Francisco 49ers. Newton managed only 98 passing yards and threw three interceptions. Coach Bill Belichick assured reporters that Newton's job was still secure, but Newton was more critical on himself, telling WEEI, quote, you keep playing games like that, bro, and it's going to be a permanent change. Newton and the Pats have another tough matchup up next as they travel to Buffalo to take on the Bills on Sunday at 1 p.m. In positive news, the head coach of the Washington football team, Ron Rivera, has finished his chemotherapy treatments for carcinomas in his neck. Rivera did not miss a game while undergoing five treatments a week for the past two months. Washington has organized a Rivera strong movement around their head coach's battle, which is hopefully now a thing of the past. Washington is coming off of a huge win last Sunday over the Dallas Cowboys, and Rivera's recovery can only add more juice to the locker room. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Joey. Now we head on over to our Boylston Bites correspondent, Carly Bronkema, who rated Halloween-themed donuts. With Halloween right around the corner, we wanted to do something a little different and a whole lot spookier. We decided to try out some spooky donuts from a whole bunch of different places around Boston so we could tell you which is best and which is spookiest. All right, so now we're gonna rank the donuts in order of least spooky to most spooky. So for least spooky, I'm gonna put the apple cider donut. Um, it doesn't really have the um, Halloween scare factor to it. Next, we're gonna do the ghost pepper one. Like, it's cute with the sprinkles and all, but it's not really like Halloween themed. Next, I'm gonna go with the pumpkin cheesecake. It's got the color factor to it, like the kind of fall orangey, like rusty orange but it's just not spooky. And then next I'm gonna go with the Duncan Spider Donut. It's got the Halloween colors, which I think is really good for it, and I love the little spider eyes, they're so cute. And then in first place, we're gonna do the Canes one. I love this spider web, that's just like very classic Halloween, and it just, you know, it fits. So first we're gonna try the Dining Hall Apple Cider Donut. I'd give it like a five out of 10. Next, I'm gonna try the Ghost Pepper one from Duncan. I would give it a six out of 10. Next, we're gonna be eating the pumpkin cheesecake donut from Blackbird. I would give it an eight out of 10. Next, we're gonna be trying the spider donut from Duncan. I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. Next, we're gonna try the spider donut from Cane's. I'll be honest, this is one I'm the most excited to try because it looks really good. This one's definitely the winner. I would give the Cane's Donut a 10 out of 10. So there you have it. Cane's is not only the spookiest, but also the most delicious. Be sure to stop by to try one of these delightfully devilish donuts. I'm Carly Bronkema for Good Morning Emerson. Thank you, Carly. Now let's head over to our entertainment correspondent, Amog Matthews. What do you have for us, Amog?
Thanks, Mike and Adelaide. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, the robot assassin from Terminator and former governor of California, revealed on social media that he had undergone heart surgery. Last Thursday, Schwarzenegger shared on Instagram and Twitter that he had his aortic valve replaced at the Cleveland Clinic Medical Center in Ohio. This wasn't his first heart surgery either. Schwarzenegger had open heart surgery two years ago to replace a pulmonary valve following a previous pulmonary valve replacement in 1997. Fortunately, he shared with us that he's already feeling better and that he is enjoying his time in Cleveland. So, do you guys know the game Among Us? It's essentially mafia or werewolves, but just like on your phone. So, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to Twitch last Tuesday night when she live-streamed Among Us with fellow Democrat Representative Ihan Omar and popular Twitch users like Pokimane, Hasanabi, and Myth. I don't watch Twitch personally. She used the opportunity to encourage viewers to vote blue. The live stream lasted three hours and garnered over 4.5 million views. Her live stream was among the 20 biggest streams ever on the website. In even more Among Us news, this popular game is attracting hackers. Hackers are spamming in-game chats, forcing game developer Inner Sloth to quickly issue a patch to fix the issue. The hackers promoted a streaming channel and threatened to damage people's phones if they didn't subscribe. The hackers also promoted a quote, Trump 2020 message. Inner Slot said in a Thursday tweet, quote, We will be pushing out an emergency server update so people who are in-game will get kicked from games. Please play private games or with people that you trust. Bear with us! Exclamation point. And even, even more Among Us news, now I'm just playing, rapper Offset from Migos was recently detained briefly near a Trump rally. Offset had an Instagram Live video going when he was asked to step out of his car because it was reported he was waving a gun at people. Offset then replied by saying that he was famous and that people were following him. Offset's representative, Darian Perry, said he complied with the officers and thanks his fans for the support. But another man who was with Offset at the time, Marcelo Almanazar, who was Cardi B's cousin, was arrested for having a concealed weapon. So that's all for me with entertainment stories, folks. And now we have our What's Trending correspondent, Quinn Chow, who tested out TikTok's most popular Halloween makeup. Good morning, Emerson. I'm Quinn Chow, and what's trending today is we're going to be trying out a bunch of different Halloween-inspired looks from TikTok, specifically from TikTok makeup artist Abby Artistry, and the catch is I have to do them all in under two minutes. So, wish me luck! Go! Okay, I'm going to start with the white, because I feel like obviously that's the base of it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm scared to put this on my face. Does it go over her lips? It does. Oh god. So you outlined it in black, so... Oh, that kind of worked. Kind, kind of. Is the, is the key there? 50 seconds. Oh my god, no way! 3, 2, 1... <laughs> Last time the two minutes went by so fast. Oh my god, I put on so much that this time I'm gonna work really fast and hard. I'm like poking my eye, I'm hurting. Why am I hurting myself? <laughs> Looks like squiggly, maybe like a preschooler got to me. Oh yes, we love a dark lip, you know, really brings out the eyes. I'm gonna give this one an eight. I really think I nailed it. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm channeling my inner Zendaya right now. She was nominated for an Emmy. She won. I was nominated for an Evie. I did not win. <laughs> Euphoria, when they like had their vision board of what they wanted, this was it. They said this. They said Quinn. <laughs> Honestly? I wish that I had more time because I feel like I could execute this if I really wanted to. But um, you know, not everything in life can be perfect. Whether you're staying inside this Halloween or just trick-or-treating around the neighborhood, there's a makeup look for whatever costume you choose. Stay safe and have a happy, happy Halloween. Thanks, Quinn. Today we're joined by our musical guest, Wens. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We're very excited to have you. So can you tell us a little bit about your musical journey? My musical journey started I've been writing songs since like the fifth grade, so for a while. Ever since I felt emotions and I was like, I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> I guess I have to write songs about it. How did you come up with the name Wens? So when I was first like starting to do sessions and meeting people, my real name's Gigi. 
And I was like, I can't say that that's my name. Like, that's so like, like bubble gummy. And like, I don't know. There's just like, it's, it's, I can't do that. And I was obsessed with the Adams family. And I was like, I'm just going to tell people my name's Wednesday. And it just stuck. And people would call me Wens, like for short. And then when I started putting out music, I was like, I guess I'll just keep it. I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> I love Wednesday Adams. I love the Adams family. I'm like a Wednesday Adams stan. She's just the best. <laughs> That's honestly such a creative way to come up with a name. Uh, what inspires you to create music? Honestly, everything. Like my personal life, my friend's life. There's really like nothing safe with me because I take everything and I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make something about this. So with that, could you tell us a little bit what your song production process looks like? I literally have no process. I just sort of sit at an instrument, like whether it's the piano or the guitar, and I bang around on some notes and I start singing some like random melodies. And I always have my voice memos on because I can't, if I don't record it, I will never remember it. And so I just mess around. And then usually like if I say a lyric in my gibberish and I really like it, I'll take it and start to like pick, pick away at it. With Tongue Tied, so that was, that's off of Lemon Collie. Um, I was in a session and I wrote down in my phone, I'm really bad at first impressions. I never know what to say because I get tongue tied in the brain. And that was before we had even started the song. And then I came back in the room and they had like been messing around on some like weird chord progression. And I was like, hmm. And, and that's how Tongue Tied was born. Now for someone who says they're bad at first impressions, you've been able to get a lot of new listeners on your recently released album, Lemon Collie. What would you say is your favorite part about releasing new music? The best part for me, I think, is when people that find my music reach out to me and like seeing how far it travels is really it's such a surreal thing to know that someone in a different country is listening to my music or like your music got me through high school and when I hear that kind of thing I'm like whoa because I think about the artist that got me through high school I think that during times when when life is just really overwhelming music saves me so if I can be that to anybody that's just my ultimate my constant dream so we heard that you're releasing two new songs later this week and that we might get to hear one of them later today what can you tell us about your next project basically I was in a long distance relationship the first song is called giant bat and that song is about the being in the relationship it's really not called giant bat for any particular reason other than I wrote it in October of 2019 and we titled it Giant Bat because we were like, it's spooky season. And then it just never changed. <laughs> so I was like, it's kind of a funny title. Um, and then Sad Sad is the second song and that is about the end of the relationship and really <laughs> it being sad. What's something that you want people to know about Sad Sad that they might not already know? Losing someone is, it's just a lot of, grief but I listen to it now and I'm like wow you've come a long way <laughs> Wens thank you so much for coming on with us today stick around to hear Wens perform her unreleased song sad sad after the break don't go anywhere Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. Now here's Wens performing her song, Sad Sad. This song's called Sad Sad and it comes out on October 30th. I hope you like it. I'll keep you in my thoughts 
guess that's where you'll have to stay Since I can't see your face till who knows when again I think that I forgot all your silly little traits And I can't even remember the way you say It's a sad, sad situation When love can't make it right And you left to pick up all the pieces You held on so tight Yeah, it's a sad, sad situation When it stops being worth the fight And you're running out of all the reasons Why you tried and tried and tried It's kind of wrong for me to wish you pain, but I just kind of hope that you feel the same. Cause I, I wish there was a way to turn it up, wish there was a way to make it stop. Oh, I, I, I think that it's a shame that we don't talk. Not that long ago you were my rock. But it's a sad, sad situation when love can't make it right. And you left to pick up all the pieces you held on so tight. Yeah, it's a sad, sad situation When it stops being worth the fight And you're running out of all the reasons Why you tried and tried and tried la, la. so much Emerson for having me. Thank you so much Wens, that was phenomenal. You can listen to more of Wens on Apple Music and Spotify. Now it's time for a happy news segment. With all the serious news in the world, we're taking this opportunity to share some lighthearted stories. Scientists have found water on the moon. A new study published Monday confirmed what many astronomers have believed for a long time. Water molecules could be seen on the moon's surface by a high-powered telescope. This discovery could enable astronauts to eventually live on the moon for long periods of time, and it could also save space programs large amounts of money, since the cost of shipping water into space is thousands of dollars per gallon. In South Australia, 100% of the electricity needs of the region have been met by solar power. 76% of the solar electricity generated is from PV panels mounted on rooftops. The rest comes from solar farms. This energy demand fulfillment was possible because of a combination of low energy demand, cloudless skies, and generally good weather. The International Energy Agency says solar power is now the cheapest form of energy for utility companies to invest in. Not only is it less expensive, but it's also more sustainable and will help conserve non-renewable energy sources like coal and other fossil fuels. A new robotic invention will make underwater drones more efficient than ever before. The drones are used to collect underwater data, clean bodies of water, and inspect pH levels. This new invention will allow them to automatically return to and connect themselves to charging ports. This eliminates the need for human intervention when batteries run out, which will save researchers both time and money. A new coral reef has been found in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. It measures 500 meters, around 1,600 feet long, making it larger than the Empire State Building. Sub Bastion, an underwater robot, was used to explore the reef on Sunday. The exploration was live streamed and there are now 3D maps that have already been created. 
The discovery of this reef confirms that there are still undiscovered species and structures in the ocean. New technologies are being developed to explore not only this reef, but also the deeper regions of all of the seas and oceans. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Have a good morning. We'll see you next time.